This program is brought to you by the Georgia Neurosurgical Institute. For over 50 years, rendering neurosurgical care to patients of all social conditions, treating complicated problems involving the brain, spine, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves, endeavoring to encourage quality care, medical research, innovation, and education on a local, national, and international basis. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Joe Sam Robinson. It's my pleasure to have with us tonight Father McDonald. Welcome, Father McDonald. Thank you very much for having me here. Well, uh, I think you're kind of a well-known figure in these parts. Is that well, correct? Well, I'm not sure how well-known uh -huh. I am, but I am a figure in this part. So you, you've been here for 11 years. Is that I'm right? I'm completing my 11th year. will begin my 12th year in June. Wow. And what exactly is your task in this part? Well, of the well I'm the pastor of St. Joseph Catholic Church. I was assigned here by uh, Bishop Bolin, and yes. we're part of the Diocese of Savannah. And I've been a, a priest for our diocese uh, 35 years Wow! and uh, have been in Macon now for almost uh, 11 years, but I was here for about a year uh, between 1979 and 1980, uh, both at St. Joseph's and at St. Peter Claver. So I'm very familiar with Macon and have stayed in touch with it over the years, so I'm happy to be back here uh, in this particular ministry. Yes, well, well it's, it's great to mm -hmm. have you. How, mm -hmm. how did you uh, sort of start your, your journey toward priesthood? I mean, that's... Well, it, I, I'm a lifelong Catholic. I yes. uh, grew up in a Catholic family and always took my faith uh, seriously, but it was really uh, in college when I was thinking about becoming a teacher, actually. Yes. Yes. Uh, although I was working at Davison's department store, which, is, uh, which was owned by Macy's yes. and, and yes. has the Macy's nameplate now. And towards the end of my college career, I was thinking maybe going uh, to work for Macy's yes. Uh, yes. Uh, in a full-time position, and they had offered me something that was rather attractive. But then at the same time, I was kind of rediscovering my yes. Catholic faith yes. as an adult. Yes. I got yes. to know some priests on yes. a more personal yes. basis, yes. and that got the process of me thinking about uh, the priesthood, and yes. one thing led to another, and I completed my uh, college education and then entered uh, St. Mary's Seminary in Baltimore yes. uh, in 1976, completed in 1980, and yes. uh, was ordained, and here I am well, here you uh, are. in 2015. So what, how has your, your journey been? I mean, you went to different uh, parishes, or well, how, does I, that, how does that work? I, I've been somewhat fortunate compared to some priests that I've had a great deal of stability in my assignments. Yes. Uh, I was five years at St. Teresa's in Albany, Georgia, yes. And then six years at our cathedral in Savannah as yes. uh, an assistant. Yes. And then named pastor of Most Holy Trinity Catholic Church yes. in downtown Augusta. And I was there for 14 yes. years. And now I'm here for 11. So I've only had really, really four assignments. Well, how does that work? Do you sort of stay in one place? I mean, in one diocese? Or uh, right. I'm a diocesan around? priest or what's called a secular priest. And uh, so I'm uh, wedded to the Diocese of yes. Savannah. Yes. And uh, the yes. bishop is the one who makes the decisions yes. about where yes. his priest yes. goes. So I've just been fortunate that I've gotten good assignments. Yes. And uh, you've, you've been here for 11 years. You've observed a lot of things mm -hmm. about the world. I mean, how do you think things are going in this part of the world? Do you see problems? Do you see things that are... You would be speaking of, uh, of Macon, Macon, Georgia, the world? or the I world mean, in how, general? How, what do you well, think I think we, there are many problems that we have to address and are addressing, yes. have addressed, yes. and new problems cropping up, old ones yes. cropping up yes. as well. I think the, the relationships uh, between the races right yes. now is at a critical juncture. There seems to be a lot more tension yes. uh, in that regard uh, nationwide, uh, yes. maybe even here in Macon to a certain extent, but not as much, I think, yes. as in yes. some other places. Yes. Uh, the, the social changes that are taking place and somewhat driven yes. by the media, yes. by the government, yes. by the secular culture are, are very concerning to yes. people of faith. Yes. Uh, how to um, cooperate with what is good, but at the yes, same time yes, offer a voice yes, of contradiction, if you will, yes. uh, to um, those that might be going beyond what we would think would be good for society and for the world in general. Um, Macon is a wonderful place yes, to be. Yes. Uh, it seems to be a harmonious community. It's yes. ecumenical. It's interfaith related. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, there's not a lot of tension in that yes. regard, and certainly Mercer presents a, a a facet for this community that's very healthy and wholesome. Yes. Now, you mentioned the uh, issues with racism. One of the things that's, all, that's always impressed me, I guess, mm -hmm. is the Healy family. Yes. Uh, and mm -hmm. the sto story about the, uh, the Healy, Father Healy, Bishop Healy, Healy. the founder mm -hmm. of Georgetown. I mm -hmm. mean, that's a rather 
that's a rather impressive story, isn't mm -hmm. it? I think the, the Catholic Church has always been, mm -hmm. if you use the word ecumenical, it's always opened its doors to everyone. We, we have, uh, even during the, the Civil War period, there weren't the same divisions between the Catholic Church in the South and the Catholic yes. Church in the North yes. as there were uh, within Protestantism yes. itself, uh, that there was still a, a, a sense of cohesiveness and unity even in that stressful time in American history. Uh, and a sense that uh, everyone yes. was created in the image and likeness of God, yes. and, and yes. there was a special concern that the church had for the poor, uh, yes. for for the African Americans, yes. for the slaves even. Uh, in my previous parish, and I would suspect here at St. Joseph's as well, uh, we have a number of had a number of, of people entered into our baptismal yes. registry who yes. were slaves, yes. and uh, the church was happy to baptize them and allow yes. them to come yes. to mass and. Uh, to join the regular community for that at that time. So uh, we've made a great deal yes, more progress yes. since that time, obviously, and have uh, kind of overcome many of the racial barriers that once uh, were obstacles uh, for the church in general and for people individually. Well, I think it's a rather great story about the Healy's. I mean, uh -huh. there's a family, I don't know if the, the story is well that well known, but mm -hmm. it's certainly known to some circles. They were, he was, he was an Irishman and, mm -hmm. I could say one of his bonds women be right. became his wife. Mm -hmm. They had children mm -hmm. in a very difficult time, and mm -hmm. they, I think, uh, the, they several the people, several of the, the daughters became nuns and right. uh, priests, and uh, mm -hmm. one person became a great Coast Guard uh, captain in off mm -hmm. Alaska. And then, mm -hmm. if, I, if, I, if you go to Georgetown, you know, it's a the uh, very eminent Catholic school. There's a statue, is that correct? That's correct. Oh, and, uh, you know, he, uh, Father Healy, as you mentioned, became uh, a bishop finally, I believe, yes. in Maine. I'm not sure which diocese yes. in Maine. Might have been Portland. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, presented a very positive uh, image of yes. a mixed race person. Uh, but he would have appeared, I think, as an African American to most people. And I'm sure uh, that that helped. Uh, uh, to break down barriers and to, to bring about some unity uh, uh, amongst the different races. It's that extraordinary period. that he mm -hmm. came from Macon. I mean, I, right. I don't know Absolutely. if we get, he gets yeah. enough yeah. Uh, uh, local right. Right. knowledge right. of this right. fact. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. huge deal. Oh, it is. Georgetown it is. is such an incredible Absolutely. place mm -hmm. to have this. Mm -hmm. I guess he's sort of sitting there mm -hmm. on the ma outside the major mm -hmm. mm -hmm. appropriate uh, chair. There's a statue of him, I believe. I believe so, it, yes. It's a great story. It's a great story. Well, we have, we have these issues out there. I mean, I guess it's the sort of controlling, I don't know what's the right word, soliciting, trying to, you know, throw Satan a punch, if you want to say mm -hmm. it. That's a tough mm -hmm. job, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's a very tough job. It is. Uh, we live in a, a, a very polarizing time yes. in terms of the social issues, whether it's uh, um, same-sex marriage yes. or yes. Uh, the rights of Christians vis-a-vis yes. -vis, yes. uh, situations that they might consider sure, immoral, sure, sure. and how to make our way in that and not create even more polarization yes. is the challenge. Uh, I think Pope Francis in particular is, is trying to uh, reach out to everyone yes. uh, and at the same time holding fast to yes, what the Catholic yes, faith uh, yes. teaches and yet trying to be inclusive, inviting yes. people to consider Christ, and yes. not pushing people away. And I think sometimes the rhetoric uh, concerning same-sex marriage yes. or homosexuality or the rights of, yes. of the gay community, the transgendered individuals, yes. uh, creates more tension and difficulties yes. than, and, and creates more problems sure, than sure, solving sure. the ones that we would hope to solve in that regard. Uh, but at the same time, the church feels that we have a voice in the public square. Yes. And uh, what concerns me is that some secularist, if you will, those yes. in government, those in the media, entertainment, would like uh, the church to remain in the confines of the four walls of the church building yes, yes. and do their thing there, but don't have a voice yes. out in the public square. And that's just not what Catholicism or Christianity yes, yes, in general yes. is about, nor is it, I think, what most religions is sure, about. They course. want to have some uh, chair at the table of yes, conversation yes. And, and formulating um, public policy and even law. You know, in our country, we're blessed to, to be able to lobby Congress yes. and the president and vote for them. And the church feels that we should have a place yes. at that as well. And by church, I mean Catholics, yes, uh, sure. uh, baptized individuals who, yes. who uh, have a role within a secular yes. society yes. and culture. So I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to maintain that and not yes. be 
um, uh, shunted to the side or marginalized yes. uh, by by this community that we call secularist yes. or secularism that uh, seems to be opposed to so much of what uh, traditional Christianity yes. is about. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's pretty complicated about uh, moral relationships and mm -hmm. It, it appears to me that if you're trying to, uh, I, I guess, influence, restrain people, whatever, show them light, mm -hmm. uh, that if and it, uh, the divine imprint on mm -hmm. opinion certainly carries a lot more weight than merely what's right mm -hmm. and wrong. And if mm -hmm. you, pers uh, in regards to uh, <coughs> uh, legal viewpoints or secular right. viewpoints, because right. at the end, what is it that's going to impel someone toward righteousness? If you want to say right. that, if there's if there's no divine imprint on anything. So if you want to act in a good way or a bad way, well, it's situationalist. You could do whatever is for you, good for you at the time, and that, that would be the way you act. individualism has always been a part of the American yes. heritage, yes. Of, of what we might call a fierce individualism, but that's yes. being kicked up a notch now in terms of of the rights of the individual versus the common good. Yes, yes. And that's where the Catholic Church uh, yes. would say that the common good is more important than uh, individual rights and this, that, or the other. Yes. And and it's not uh, computing with yes. uh, many people who are formed in the more yes. uh, of the me generation, uh, beginning with my generation, yes. obviously in the 60s and 70s, yes. that's what we were about, yes. it was all about us. And that seems to now take on a new perspective uh, within the legal system, yes. activist uh, judges yes. who yes. are uh, ruling against popular vote in yes, terms of true. various aspects of, of marriage yes, or yes. whatever. And um, it's somewhat concerning that, that if we're so individualistically oriented that is going to have a, a detrimental f effect on yes, society yes. and on the common good. And I see, I think we see that happening already, that there's a fragmentation occurring, there's uh, in our society, there's uh, a lot of problems that that could escalate uh, with time if, if we're not able to somehow say we've got to put the common good above uh, the individual. Yes, yes. Now, we don't want to take away the rights of the individual, yes. but at the same time, the common good has to be very important. Well, balance is complicated. Right, isn't it? Right. So many, we have so much change, we have so mm -hmm. many things happening, it's different to keep your sense of gravity about what's mm -hmm. up. Now, uh, we sort of chatted about this briefly a little bit before, but uh, St. Thomas More. Yes. Or we could call him Sir Thomas More. I'll call him uh, St. Thomas. Uh, you, uh, maybe you call him St. Thomas More. It's a rather fascinating mm -hmm. figure mm -hmm. uh, from, oh, he lived 500 years or so mm -hmm. ago, and he became a, a martyr, you could say, right. uh, in, in this, uh, I guess, uh, the transition mm -hmm. was going on in England at the time, the, and the Reformation and the difficulties going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, it's, it's interesting because there's some kind of boundary that's between secular and religious mm -hmm. thought and power and the role of ethics mm -hmm. balancing whatever the government or whatever the, mm -hmm. the general, uh, I guess, secular thrust is. There's some, some people that would just give their life to Correct. preserve. Well, in the, time of, about that? In the yes. time of St. Thomas More, of course, uh, the relationship to the church and state was very tight, very yes. close. There was yes. a, they were almost one. Uh, and so England obviously had a, a king yes. who uh, was looking for heirs and was yes. divorcing wives right, and yes. marrying others. And ultimately, uh, the Pope said that he was not allowed to have yes. an annulment for a yes. marriage that, that, that he had sought a Catholic annulment for. And at that point, then the, 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 the king of England decided that he would, King Henry VIII, would yes. make himself uh, the head of the church, yes. uh, a secular power. Yes. And St. Thomas uh, More, who was a good friend of King Henry VIII, and King Henry VIII had promoted him to high yes, places yes. as Chancellor yes, yes, of, sure. of England and all, uh, just refused to acknowledge that King Henry VIII was the head of the church yes. and refused to submit to uh, his ideas of what marriage should be yes. uh, and refused to submit to uh, some of the things that uh, he was yes, doing to yes. the Catholic Church at that particular yes. time once he claimed uh, headship of that. And so that put him on a confrontational yes. path with, with the king that eventually uh, led to his martyrdom. Uh, he's known as the uh, patron saint of lawyers, uh, and, and from what you tell me, also the patron saint D of dare, politicians. Dare we say, yeah. and they certainly mm -hmm. need a patron saint. They absolutely they do, they yes. certainly, <laughs> They certainly need a And the lawyers in my like parish know that, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah, that's right. Everyone and the needs, judges in my parish. The judges, everyone <laughs> needs a good patron saint. That's I think right. that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and so 
And actually, he didn't. Uh, I'm trying to think about this. Pope uh, John Paul did did something. If I can, if I'm right on this, I mean, I think he uh, he made him the, made the patron saint. There's a uh, Pope John Paul connection. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I know that uh, Saint uh, Thomas More was canonized a saint in the Catholic Church. I think in 1935. That's by, correct. That's by right, Pope yes. Pius XI, probably. And and then you're correct that Pope uh, John Paul, Pope Saint John Paul II. Saint John. Uh, uh, elevated him uh, in terms of, of even giving him more stature as yes. a saint over a particular area, which may have well been the uh, judicial system or lawyers. I, or I rather like that, yeah. I must say. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I like that. I mean, mm -hmm. it, and, and I think there's sort of a certain, if you're a person in power, mm -hmm. you actually have secular power. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can be very corrupting, can mm -hmm. it not? And, oh, uh, the, uh, and uh, you're thinking about uh, King Henry VIII, mm -hmm. In the, the, I guess what I'd like to say is many times right. figures of uh, uh, in power mm -hmm. are so abstracted from anything else right. that they, they go a little crazy. Right. I mean, well, what I find fascinating about uh, St. Thomas More is that he stood up for his Catholic faith. Uh, yes. We have to approach him as a Catholic. Yes. And, and the challenge is that yes. uh, a king claiming authority, right. religious authority, that he simply didn't have yes. presented for him. Yes. And that he was able and willing, by God's grace, to, to yes. uh, die for his principles yes. and not to submit to that, what he would have considered a bogus authority yes. as the, the, the King of England. It's interesting to me as a Catholic that uh, once the Reformation started and what happened uh, in England as well as the Protestant Reformation kind of yes. are separate but coincided around the same time. And yes. So there's an influence yes. uh, upon the Church of England uh, from Protestantism. Um, but it seems to me that the, the, the subjects to uh, the king or the queen always took on the religion of the king or queen yes. after the Reformation. Yes, that's right. yes. So there was this back and forth between yes. Catholic, Protestant, or even within the different denominations of yes. uh, Protestantism, it all hinged yes. on who yes. the king was, what the queen was. Yes. And uh, St. Thomas More didn't want to have anything to do with that as a yes. lay person. Yes. And he was a lay person. He wasn't uh, a yes. member of the clergy. At one time he may have considered becoming a monk. But uh, he really is an example to the laity of yes. fidelity to the church. Yes. Uh, and to the uh, magisterium or the yes, hierarchy yes. of the church, and, and even in difficult times. And I think that speaks to us today. Uh, sometimes I get into arguments with my fellow yes, Catholics, yes, parishioners, yes, about yes. same-sex marriage right, or right. this, that, or the yes, other. And there yes, are some yes, that yes. Uh, think the church needs to get with the times and sure, all that. Sure. And I'm saying, listen, uh, we don't bow to uh, secular pressure. Yes. We're not going to give in to yes. government pressure yes. in terms of our, our teachings. And, and we're going to stand up for what we believe, yes. even if that does marginalize us, or even if we lose yes, parishioners yes, yes. Uh, because of the truth. Yes. Uh, and, and I think that's what St. Thomas More teaches us and teaches lay Catholics, yes. that, that um, sometimes being a Catholic, being a Christian, yes. means uh, going against the tide, swimming against the yes. tide. I, I kind of like, I, I sort of like mm -hmm. him as a figure. Mm -hmm. Uh, for it, it, for he seems pretty human to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's a man for all seasons, a big mm -hmm. uh, you know play, I guess. Right. But he had all these different qualities. This very human kind of guy, and uh, he was a lawyer and a brilliant lawyer, and he rose so high in the world. As to, uh, mm -hmm. I guess he was the chancellor of England. Right. And I, uh, I guess uh, when martyrdom approached, he didn't exactly he didn't. Leap forward. To he, he was he, well. He didn't leap forward, but he wasn't shrill about it either. Now he stood yes. up for for his faith when he was about to be That's beheaded. Right. Uh, he was very cordial to those that sure, were about sure. to put him to death, and and kind of joked that he looked forward to one day sitting at the sure, table sure, sure. Uh, at, at the heavenly kingdom together with them. And so I think he respected uh, the conscience of yes, people yes. at that time, even yes. though he would have disagreed. Uh, with them um, vociferously, yes. obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, I kind of like it, I guess, mm -hmm. with getting to lawyers mm -hmm. and legal mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. that there w yeah, there's like uh, hearing the cock crow right. three times. Right. He was a human person. Oh, absolutely. And it, he, yeah. he knew exactly what awaited him. And, and he, he was, was a member of the laity. I think that's right, was really, he, he wasn't he, a member of the he, clergy. He knew, he knew what mm -hmm. awaited him. And mm -hmm. he, as a good lawyer, he did right. as much as he could mm -hmm. to avoid martyrdom, I mm -hmm. guess you'd say that. And then absolutely. when the choice finally came to mm -hmm. him, he, he made the a, a, a superior moral choice, and which uh, mm -hmm. which makes him to me human. It's a pretty oh, human. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you can imagine a situation, mm -hmm. a contemporary situation, where someone was faced with any any kind of uh, a person high in the world, maybe like a lawyer uh, or a judge or a uh, uh, a politician, You're very high in the world. Everything is at your beck and call. All mm -hmm. the wealth of the world, all the all the glory of the world, 
And it's very difficult to forsake that. I mean, it's just, it's something that would be difficult to forsake. And then he, I can, I can appreciate his Well, he's an example yes. for us and a challenge to those who are forsaking yes, the ways yes, of faith yes, for yes, political yes, uh, gain. Yes. Uh, one of the things that frustrates me as a, as a Catholic, and I know frustrates many Catholics, is are Catholic politicians who seem to embrace not their faith yes. publicly, but but the, the secular trends, yes. and all for the purpose of getting elected to a particular yes. office, uh, and actually will deny the church yes. and, and and our beliefs uh, yes. in uh, in the context of saying, well, we yes. serve everyone. Right. Yes. But but you know the world has only so many yes. Catholics. Yes. We ought to be right. uh, yes. striving yes. to put forth what the yes. church believes yes. Yes. is good for society yes. and and for the common good and. And to be willing to, to stand up for that, even if it yes. goes against yes. the popular tide. Well, you can open the door. So, I mean, right. when you open the door to, I guess, the the, the situational ethics. I guess mm -hmm. I would say it that right. way. Situational right. ethics. So, mm -hmm. right and wrong is whatever mm -hmm. uh, you can you can weigh on the scales. Well, mm -hmm. this is kind of right. This is mm -hmm. kind. It's going to be better for me personally mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, mm -hmm. I, and once that door opens, it it can really lead to horrific. Uh, horrific things happening. Right. Well, we see horrible things happening in the Middle East uh, yes. and to Christians uh, uh, there, but also to other religious minorities. Yes. And so few in the world are voicing any sort of concern about it. Uh, Pope Francis has made yes. that point as recently as Easter Sunday, yes. uh, that the world needs to take note of what's happening and intervene yes. to, to save these people. and. Uh, Christianity has been in Iraq and yes, Syria yes, since yes, the beginning. Yes, I mean, yes. uh, longer than uh, Islam, yes, yes. and and now it's about to be eradicated yes. uh, through ethnic cleansing or whatever uh, yes. the, the murders that are taking place in the most despicable sort of way in children yes, as well yes, being yes. murdered. Uh, and yet, out of this uh, are coming new martyrs for the for yes, the faith, both yes. in the, the Catholic Church, I presume the Protestant churches, yes, but also yes, the yes. Eastern Orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. Uh, where we're seeing uh, Christians dying for their faith and saying the name of Jesus as yes, they're about to yes, be beheaded. Yes, yes. Uh, I think the same thing happened in Kenya where Christians were targeted yes. at the university, 160 yes, of them yes, I believe, and, yes. and they died for their yes, faith. Yes. Uh, they would be considered martyrs. And, and I would say that, that there's similar in tradition to uh, yes. St. Thomas More in that regard. Yes. Well, is it, you know, I don't want to be, speak uh, hyperbole, but maybe are we living in the age of uh, the new Nero, so to speak, Nero being the sort of secular world out there where situational ethics are prevailing, and then we have a huge increase in human power. We have these tectonic plates, the mm -hmm. populations increasing mm -hmm. worldwide, and these, these two great, I guess, religious forces are rubbing against mm -hmm. each other. It's, it's going to cr create enormous moral dilemmas. History that? repeats itself. There's nothing new under the sun yes, uh, yes. in this regard. And the dangers of uh, despotism, yes. uh, the control of government over yes, people's yes, lives yes. Uh, is very, very real. And I have uh, on staff, one of my associate priests is uh, from Ghana. Yes. And uh, he's been with us now for a couple of years. Uh, he's very resentful, as are yes. most Africans, yes. of the influence of American culture and yes. African culture yes. in terms of human sexuality, sure. Uh, sure. the marketplace, uh, yes. putting money above people. Yes. Uh, and he sees that as something that's Western yes. and, and not good. Yes. Uh, and, and perhaps some of the issues that Islam would have with yes. the West is built upon the same arrogance uh, that the West has in shoving down the throats of the rest of the world what they would consider a corrupt ideology, yes. uh, an immoral position, and, and that's creating inflamed attitudes yes. and, and, and then generalizations are being made and people are being made to suffer. Yeah. Uh, so I think we as Americans, we in the West, need to yes. take a look at uh, how money drives so much uh, uh, in our culture. Uh, whether it's about sex or drugs or, or uh, commodities or whatever, and to see how, uh, to understand how that really denigrates yes. the human person ultimately. Uh, Pope Francis would often say that uh, uh, in Rome, if a street person was found dead yes. in a very horrible way, that would be minor news compared to the stock market going down a few yes, points. Yes. Uh, that there's more concern about that than the yes. human person. And uh, I think that's a very uh, real 
concern on his part. Even if you look at the media-driven acceptance of uh, marijuana, uh, it's all about the money. Yes. If you notice uh, that, that in Colorado and other places, more money is being made by uh, um, entrepreneurs yes, who are right. now yes, selling yes, these yes, drugs yes, legally, yes. and it's a big money maker. So yes. let's get on board. Yes. You see CNN promoting it right, and right. The other networks and uh, obviously the media. Yes. So these are issues that we have to deal with. Well, what is the American dream? I mean, is it to have a lot of money? Is it a city on the hill? Is it, I mean, so to speak, mm -hmm. is, it, is the American dream in a way some kind of, I would say, a covenant in a way. Mm -hmm. I would say right. the third. I don't want to speak too much about it, but right. the idea that we have these tremendous possibilities in the country, mm -hmm. and if we behave as a moral nation, mm -hmm. we, you know, it's obviously people have been raised up that have come here. Anyone that's a citizen here has just enormous influence, power, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of our, our national identity depends on moral behavior. Mm -hmm. And if if that's if that's removed from the equation. I mean, isn't that sort of destroys the country in a way? One of the, the, the gifts of, uh, of, of America to the world is this separation of church and state. I think that's a very wonderful yes. thing. But it's not the exclusion of the church from an influence in society. And Americans yes. in general, whether yes. they be Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, or yes. whatever, are religious people. Yes. Uh, and yet we have this secular power coming in saying, uh, we don't care about your religiosity, and it's probably the ma yes. majority of Americans yes. that yes. Are, are religiously motivated. Yes. Uh, we want you to keep that uh, in your temple, your yes. churches, right. your yes. synagogues, yes. and then let us deal with uh, the nitty-gritty of making laws and, and promoting uh, yes. whatever ideology is being promoted at a particular time. And secular power is getting to be so great, isn't mm -hmm. it? If you look it at is. the power of the state, Mm -hmm. and contrasted, I don't know, let's say 200 years ago, mm -hmm. the state had its powers. Right. But if you were lived in rural Georgia, uh, it would be rather difficult for the state to intrude too much. Right. Right. Now the power uh, is, is extraordinary, oh, is it? And, the, and, the, and also, we could say one of the things that happens is the, uh, the, the information that people receive on different issues. And so mm -hmm. you mentioned the martyrdom that happened in these terrible events and, mm -hmm. uh, in Kenya, uh, in Libya, when the, uh, the beheadings oh, are yeah, taking yeah. place. There's, uh -huh. And there seems to be sort of a reluctance to talk much about it. Mm -hmm. And instead, the, the issues would be many times on uh, what, what I guess the media would call the abuses of the church. Mm -hmm. So well, this, is, this is some evil thing the church has done, or once mm -hmm. again, we've spotted them. <clears throat> to me, it would be interesting to go through and pick the New York Times up and just go through and pick articles out. Mm -hmm. And see how you would how you would weigh the the way that uh, events are being portrayed. If you look at the atrocities committed against people, most of these have been generated by secular ideologies. Yes. Uh, for example, communism, yes. what it did to its people. Yes. Nazism, what it did in terms yes, of the Holocaust yes, and yes. The, the slaughter of not only six million Jews yes, simply because yes. they were Jews, but six million other people because yes. they were considered undesirable, yes. many of them Christian, yes. gypsies and, yes. and the like. Uh, these weren't religiously motivated. Yes. These were motivated by secular ideology. Just so. You know? And the idea that you, you would imagine mm -hmm. that people, mm -hmm. that all the evil in the world had occurred referable to uh, religious excess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't believe that's the case. I'll just make one comment. Many just Sometimes you do things, you go through life, you say, gee, I wish I'd done that, and I didn't do it. And I was, uh, many years ago, I was in Moscow, it was 1991, mm -hmm. and the Soviet Union was cracking up. The whole place was going, going down, and the artists and people had appeared, and they were little on the street. The Soviet Union was still there. And, mm -hmm. and I guess there's the, in, uh, in Red Square, there's the, I guess it's the, it's the, uh, the cathedral of, uh, the, I want to say St. Michael, and I mentioned maybe St. Michael and St. Paul. I apologize mm -hmm. for that. It's the mm -hmm. major church in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the in the Kremlin, the Red Square. And on top, the Russians or the Soviets had put a uh, they taken the cross down and they put a uh, uh, they put a red star there. And this picture of the painting was uh, I guess St. Michael was coming down with a cross to take the red star away. <laughs> If I get afraid, what a great, and the picture cost $20, and I didn't buy it, and I've been haunted ever since then. Boy, I wish I had the picture. Mm -hmm. The story is that, yes, the uh, Christianity has been, it's, been, it's taken some big punches, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's such a powerful, I guess, eternal thing that well, it comes back, does it absolutely. not? Absolutely. And you look at what uh, St. John Paul II did in his contribution to bringing down communism in Eastern Europe. Yes. Uh, it's... Uh, 
quite yes. amazing when yes. you stop and think about it. Well, uh, Father McDonald, that's been a great talking to you. Thank Our you time has me. been exhausted. We'll have God to have you, you back and talk Thank some you. more. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This program is brought to you by the Georgia Neurosurgical Institute. For over 50 years, rendering neurosurgical care to patients of all social conditions, treating complicated problems involving the brain, spine, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves, endeavoring to encourage quality care, medical research, innovation, and education on a local, national, and international basis.